Hey everyone, my name is Erin. I'm a regional fitness manager in North Carolina. This week we're talking about the importance of variety, endurance, strength, and power, everything that we incorporate into Orange Theory classes. I'm super excited today to talk about power, one of my personal favorites. And hopefully when you're thinking about power, you're not just thinking burpees, jump squats, all outs. Yes, that's power, but really anything that we do in Orange Theory can be incorporate power. So our first thing, what is power? It's the ability to overcome resistance or exert force in the shortest period of time. So it's all about being explosive and we can alter our power just by changing our tempo. What does that mean? We always have our eccentric movement, elongating that muscle, and then we have our contraction, which is called the concentric, which is shortening that muscle fiber. So anytime, let's say we're doing a squat, for instance, and I'm gonna go over this a little bit later, we're slowly going down to that squat like we're sitting in a chair, and then we're gonna explode up with that one powerful quick tempo as we contract that quadricep, that's a power movement right there. We don't have to do it loaded or we can do it loaded. It's pretty much the ability to overcome gravity or to overcome that load. Now, for you to appreciate power, hopefully you walk away after this video with something that you didn't know and you can share it with your friends. And then when you come into class, we've got some power, to, uh, power stuff going on, you can appreciate it that much better. So as we get older, we tend to lose muscle. And with that is power as well. So when we hit about age 30, if we're not training, every decade we're gonna lose about three to 8% muscle. And then by the time we get to age 50, we lose it at an even more rapid rate, potentially one to 2% every single year. Now power is exactly the same and they are connected. I'm sure that we can probably assume that. By the time we get to 30, we're losing a little bit of power if we're not training. By the time we get to 40, if we're not training power at all, we can potentially lose 17% of our power every single decade. So what does this tell us? I'm not telling you this so that you have to worry about it. You're thinking, oh, why do I even train? We're gonna come up with some things to actually overcome these numbers and potentially avoid it or reverse this all together. So as we get older as well, our nervous system declines, and there are some things that happen with that, a multitude of things. What comes to my mind initially, as we talk about power, is we have a reduction in type two muscle fibers or our fast switch muscle fibers. We're not as powerful, we don't react as quickly, maybe we, have, um, we lose a little bit of balance or coordination, and obviously we you know, reduce the likelihood or we increase the likelihood actually of injury. So what does the data tell us? The data does tell us with lots of research that we may be strong, but we may be slow. And it's super important that we are reactive, we're quick, and this doesn't just help us within Orange Theory. Everything we do in here is gonna transfer with those other 23 hours we have in our day, and that's what everything is about. So when I think of being reactive, being quick, it can be something like driving in the car, someone's coming into your lane, you quickly gotta get out of that lane. Or maybe you lose your balance, you wanna be able to quickly be able to land safely with proper mechanics, something even like changing direction. Sometimes we think about athletes or sports performance when you think about changing direction. Absolutely, but it applies to everyone as well. And it applies to everything outside of the studio. So, like I said, what does the data tell us? It is vital to train with power and continuously challenge our nervous system. Strength is important, I know you got that video, but we're gonna talk about power and we lose power at a much faster rate than strength. Actually, we lose it at double the rate. One question that we kind of can ask for everything is if, if you don't train it or you don't use it, do you lose it? With power, yes, you will lose it. But what's great is no matter what your background is, whether you've been an athlete your entire life, maybe you're an athlete or you trained when you were younger, you took some time off, or maybe you're brand new to fitness. It doesn't matter where you're starting, where you're at, we can actually reverse the process of losing power and regain and restore any power loss and I'm gonna give you some tools to do that while you're in the studio. So now we're gonna talk about all three components and how the power aspect comes into play. So when you think about power on the floor, there's probably some exercises that come to mind. I'm thinking jump squat, plyometric push-up or power push-up, maybe alternating jump lunges, single arm snatches, cleaner presses, and a lot of those have in common is that we're actually elevating from the ground. And a lot of them are super challenging. But what's great about Orange Theory is it's all about building the foundation. We can't come in day one and expect to do a plyometric push-up. If our squat mechanics aren't there, we definitely don't wanna go straight for a jump squat. So we wanna be able to build and master these exercises before we go into that jumping movement. But what we talked about earlier is it's all about tempo. We can still train with power with those options and those foundational movements before we actually progress 
and get into those jumps, or maybe we don't even ever get to those jumps. So when you think about a jump squat, what can we do to still have power without actually leaving the ground? Well, what we can do is as we squat down, we can go nice and slow on the eccentric and then hold it here and we're gonna drive up with one explosive count. Noticing I'm having extension on my hips, my knees. Once we've conquered that and we feel like we've mastered it, we can go one step further. We can do that same lowering experience and then we can drive up through the ankles and we're gonna triple extension and we're essentially still training power and being explosive. Think of me out the power push up. If we don't have that, uh, that regular push up nailed down, maybe we don't, it's, we're not ready to actually leave the ground, but we can still slowly lower to the ground with the hands on the floor, even the bench, and drive up contracting those chest muscles with one powerful count. Or maybe we take it to a dumbbell explosive chest press. So as you can see, there's a variety of things we can do and it's all about whatever the focus is for that day and what's best for you. So now we're gonna talk about the treadmill. So what most likely comes to mind when we're doing power on the treadmill is if you're a jogger or a runner, you're thinking 30 second to one minute all out sprints, maybe seven, maybe 10, maybe 12 if you're lucky. If you're a power walker, you're thinking short strides really quickly uphill. And if you're on that biker strider, you're thinking not too high of resistance with those gears, but high RPMs and the, those watts and power output are coming up. Now the goal when we're doing power on the treadmill is to reach that anaerobic threshold as fast as we can. And then as soon as we do and we're holding it, we should have, and I wanna emphasize, have to take that walking recovery. And I know you hear the coaches saying that. Now, if we're able to easily hop back in a jog, a walk or whatever, or not a jog, but a walk with an incline, whatever it may be, we probably were not at our true all out pace. The coach will give you the focus for the day. Maybe we're gonna try to gradually build into our most aggressive effort, but sometimes we wanna go into our most aggressive effort, have to take all of that walking recovery, and it's okay if we have to pull back. Know what the focus is for that day and come up with a plan so that you're getting the most out of it. It is all about the peaks and the valleys. So when you look at that OTB screen, we should be trying to get in that orange zone as fast as possible with that anaerobic threshold. And then during that walking recovery, getting down to that green as well before we're able to conquer that next all out or that next aggressive push. Also, you may not see as many splat points on that day and that's okay. That's due to those walking recoveries and due to those short bursts. But what's great about sprint training or all out training is that it's gonna increase our strength, our speed and our power. And what else it's gonna do is it's gonna help burn extra calories as well and increase our metabolic rate at rest. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about the rower. So when you think power, you're most likely thinking 200 meter benchmark row or maybe some 100 meter all out rows. Just like on the treadmill, we shouldn't be able to hold this high of an intensity for much longer than 30 seconds, maybe not even to one minute. When we think about these rows, we're thinking a high stroke rate. It's gonna vary for everyone and depending on the focus of that day, but at least 28 strokes a minute with an aggressive, powerful leg drive through those foot plates, those watts should be coming up with every single leg drive. And just like on the treadmill, that lactic acid is gonna build up if we're giving it our best effort and we're gonna to have to recover. And it should be a nice row recovery, similar to that walking recovery. What else that we can think about is, just like we were on the floor talking about an explosive leg drive up on those squats or maybe that concentric movement, we can compare that and transfer it over to the rower. So we're thinking about driving back as fast as we can and then that's the eccentric coming back to that rower. So nice and aggressive and then making sure that we're utilizing those recovery rows. So as we finish up, remember power doesn't have to necessarily have that load or that weight. It's all about how quickly you can explode and be aggressive on that concentric tempo or portion of the exercise. Also, not just the treadmill and the rower, but if we're training with power, we should be having to use lots of recovery. These types of workouts, these types of exercises are super demanding, so take care of yourself after these movements, but also when you get home outside of the studio. As Ellen Latham would say, Orange Sherry is an anti-aging workout. So as you come back into the studio, any workout it is, I want you to think about what is happening on the cellular level, specifically when it's a power day.